Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance as all Glacier Shri Prabhupada. Welcome to devotees to this morning's Bhagavatam class. It's morning in US. Um, it's a day in other countries. So we welcome all the devotees in this uh, for today's class. Today we will be discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 1, Verse 7. And the chapter is entitled The First Steps to God uh, to God Realization. And it's a discussion. It's actually uh Sukadev Goswami giving the steps of God realization to March Prikshit. And we are very happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. So all glories to you and Prabhupada Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all yours, Maharaj. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vaya Namo Nayo Rajam Nirvita Vidhi Sedaktaha Nai Gunya Star in the Tesma Guna Nukantane Hare Translation O King Parikshit, mainly the topmost transcendentalists who are above the regulative principles and restriction take pleasure in describing the glories of the Lord. The topmost transcendentalist of the liberated soul is therefore not within the purview of the regulatory principles. <clears throat> A neophyte who is intended to be promoted to the spiritual plane is gu guided by the spiritual master under regulative principles. He may be compared to a patient who is treated by various restrictions on the medical jurisdiction. <clears throat> <clears throat> Generally, liberated souls also take pleasure in describing the transcendental activities. As mentioned above, since Narayan, Hari, the personality of Godhead, is beyond the material creation, his form and attributes are not material. The topmost transcendentalists of the liberated souls realize him by advanced experience of transcendental knowledge. And therefore, they take pleasure in the discussion of the transcendental qualities of the Lord's pastimes. In the Bhagavad Gita 4.9, the personality of Godhead declares that his appearance and activities are all divyam or transcendental. The common man, who is under the spell of material energy, takes it for granted that the Lord is like one of us, and therefore he refuses to accept the transcendental nature of the Lord's form, name, etc., the topmost transcendentalist is not interested in anything material and is taking interest in the matter of the Lord's activities is definite proof that the Lord is not like one of us in the material world. In Vedic literature also, it is confirmed that the Supreme Lord is one, but that he is engaged in transcendental pastimes in the company of his unalloyed devotees, and that simultaneously he is present as the super soul an expansion of Balatev in the heart of the living entities. Therefore, the highest perfection of transcendental realization is to take pleasure in hearing <clears throat> and describing the transcendental qualities of the Lord and not emerging into his impersonal Brahman existence for which the impersonalist monas aspire. Real transcendental pleasure is realized in the glorification of the transcendent, transcendental Lord and not in the feeling of being situated in this impersonal feature. But there are others who are not the topmost transcendentalists, but are in a lower status, who do not take pleasure in describing the transcendental activities of the Lord. Rather, they discuss such activities of the Lord formally with the aim of merging into his existence. Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine 
Tasmir Visesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarane Panchakalpa Taru Bischa Kripa Sindhu Pe Bacha Patita Nam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Namaha Jaisi Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nithananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Vadanti tad tad vad vidyams tad gyanam avayam vameti paramatmeti bhagavaneti sabjate. The absolute truth is one, but it's divided into three. Three levels of realization. Brahman effulgence paramatma, localized manifestation of the Lord within the heart of all living entities. And the Bhagavan feature of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here we're talking about the topmost aspect of God realization, the personality of Godhead. Personality means one who has activities, one who has qualities, one who has features, one who has reciprocations with other living entities. So that is Krishna, that is the highest form of God realization. And there's those who approach the absolute truth in the lower levels to become free from the suffering of material energy, the jnanis, by drilling the respiration, and by following certain rules and regulations of Shastric direction, they somehow transcend material energy. And their desire is to ultimately merge into the Brahman effulgence of the Lord or to merge into the body of the Lord. And they're called jnanis. They don't enjoy much happiness. The only happiness they get is a relief from the suffering that comes by way of living in the material energy. So their, their pleasure, there is some pleasure, just like if you're suffering from some pain, and all the pain is gone, there is a relief, and that is a kind of a pleasure. And in that pleasure, there is some satisfaction, but that is not real pleasure. Higher than that is the those who uh, worship the Lord as a supreme personality of Godhead within the hearts of all living entity. He's localized. It's called Paramatma. He's an expansion of Lord Balaram, and he's also Guru Tattva. He also... He is the the in, indwelling guide of the yogis who worship him through various forms of meditation. Their their uh, their transcendental happiness is a little bit higher than the jnanis, the yogis, and they also become free from the influence of the material energy. But because they worship him in order to control the material energy, uh, they do not get much pleasure either. They have a power to have some control over the material energy where they can ward off any forms of suffering and they can also uh, or defy the laws of material energy. Many of them can do various types of yoga, uh, gymnastics, and there's one yogi, he stuck his head in the ground and with dirt all around his head and he was st standing with his legs straight up. So somehow he was breathing even though he wasn't exposed to the atmosphere. Well, they can do that. They can also do other kinds of tricks. The yogis are good at doing tricks. They can bring things from different places Prabhupada talks about that, how his father would invite various yogis to stay. And in one incident, one yogi said, ask anything from me and I will get it for you. And Prabhupada's father said, can you bring me some pomegranates for Kavur? And the yogi said, well, just go into the next room and there... On the table was a pond of a, a fresh pomegranate branch. So like, they're spiritual magicians, that's all. 
they take great pleasure and they, they accumulate followers. And people think that they're actually incarnations of God or God themselves because they can defy the laws of material energy. Yeah. But then the uh, devotees, those who actually understand what is the foundation for spiritual uh, growth, and they worship the Supreme Personality of God. And here, they're also sometimes called the topmost transcendentalists. In those topmost transcendentalists, there's two categories. There's those who follow the regulative principles and restrictions, and they get guidance from their spiritual master, and they make progress. And those who have made progress beyond a certain level of development, where they actually have, they actually are above the regulative principles. Sometimes they're called raga bhaktis or raganuga. They're on spontaneous devotional service. Well, what is their activities, and how do they maintain that that level of spontaneity? Is they hear about and describe the glories of the Lord, the Lord's transcendental pastimes. So this is these are the topmost transcendental. Sometimes they follow the regulative principles, and sometimes they don't. They do just to teach, but basically it says here that they are above the regulative principles. So if they don't follow, there's no loss on their part. They don't fall down because they're absorbed in the highest activity, and that is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Bodhiyantas parasparam katiyantas chimam necha tushanti cha yamanti cha. And that is the goal of devotional service. Unless we actually take part in hearing regularly the glories of the Lord and his different features, his names, his forms, his qualities, and pastimes, we will remain in a very low level of bhakti. We will not really move forward, and we will still struggle with the material energy. But when we practice chanting the holy names of the Lord and developing a taste for chanting through association with and serving Vaishnavas, that is the way by which transcendental knowledge and transcendental pleasure starts to develop in the association of devotees hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And transcendentals, they take great pleasure. It says here, what does it say here? I go down the page a little bit. Just a little bit. There, no, yeah, there you go, right? The topmost transcendentalists or the liberated realize Krishna by advanced experience knowledge and therefore, they take pleasure in discussion of the transcendental qualities and past Lord's pastimes. So here is this is this is Krishna consciousness. We're meant to develop our relationship with Krishna and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, as it's mentioned in the early part of this chapter. To hear, chant, and remember the glories of the Lord, particularly at the time of death, makes one perfect in transcendental consciousness and brings one back to the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So devotees don't take much time in that area. Mm, that's the sad part of our society. We don't take enough time to hear and chant the glories. We're mostly engaged in various types of activities. And that's nice too. But those activities are supposed to develop, we're supposed to develop an attraction for Krishna through those activities, which leads us to a taste for hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And once one is situated on that platform, then the, the process of devotional service is, that's why Srila Prabhupada, he not only gave us the Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto with Krishna's activities and pastimes, but he knew many of us could not approach the scripture in such a direct way. So he, he made the activities of Krishna more in a general story-like form, combining all the verses in a easy to understand flow, uh, interspersed with his explanations of the different pastimes. So the Krishna book is really one of the uh, great gifts by Srila Prabhupada. It was his desire that he would expose the devotees in a very more accessible way to the 10th canto. And he also felt at the time that he did that, that he may not be able to be here to finish the 10th canto. So he gave me what is called 
a summary study of the 10th Canto Krishna book. And so Prabhupada said, you should read Krishna book every night before you take rest. <laughs> and Prabhupada used to, used to read Krishna book himself in the association with devotees when he would meet devotees in the evening and wherever he was, he would ask for Krishna book. And then he would choose a particular pastime and read it. And sometimes he would laugh at Krishna's, how Krishna was killing the demons or uh, Krishna was interacting with his devotees in Sakya Ras. And he would comment and uh, he would enjoy more than the devotees were <laughs> because Prabhupada was on that pastime, on that platform of transcendental uh transcendental attraction to the Lord through his various pastimes. So one gets attracted to the Lord through chanting the holy names, and then the forms of the Lord become more prominent within the devotee's life. And as that progresses, one starts to learn about the qualities and characteristics of the Lord. And then that actually gravitates or culminates in his transcendental pastimes, which is the highest form of spiritual meditation, to meditate on Krishna through his various pastimes. So this is the ultimate goal because just following rules and regulations is a stage. And if we do it expertly at the same time, develop our attraction for Krishna through chanting the holy names of the Lord and associating with and serving devotees, gradually we'll come to the platform of taste. And here it's mentioned, it's mentioned by Jiva Goswami in relationship to this verse, he comments on this verse, that when one gets a taste, then that is actually the standard by which one will perform devotional service out of a taste. It doesn't become, we don't struggle with rules and regulations anymore. We follow them, but it's the taste that is the motivating force that brings the devotee higher and higher in Krishna consciousness. It's like when you taste something sweet and you like it very much, then you always look forward to that same food item again and you relish it at each time. So Krishna's pastimes are like that. And there's a variety of pastimes with different flavors and different moods according to Krishna's relationship with his devotees and the different rasas. His mood of servitorship with his devotees such as Raktak and Dwar Daruka are his servitors who serve him in different ways and his devotees, Narada Muni, and others, they serve him in different ways. And then higher than that is his relationship with his friends, how they sport together, play together, Krishna herds cows, and they exchange, they play games, they have fun, and uh, uh, the whole mood of Krishna and his friends, and we, we want friends in this material world, and we look forward to having a good friend. And if we get a good friend, we consider ourselves very fortunate. But Krishna is ultimately Suhit. He is the best of all friends. And one can aspire to become Krishna's friend. And ultimately, if that is the aspiration of the devotee and he achieves that, and then one can play with Krishna in a friendly way and enjoy Krishna, joke with Krishna, exchange foodstuffs with Krishna, it becomes a transcendental experience. It's not like the activities of the material world. It's all chintamani. It's rasavaisa. It's full of transcendental happiness at every moment. It's just like sometimes you, you meet a very dear person who you haven't seen for a long time. And then all of a sudden there's a happiness that arises within you just by the presence of that person in your life. You can imagine how happy you will be in association with Krishna because his body is trans is in a his body is full of transcendental pleasure. 
Well, just in, when he appears in someone's life, everyone becomes free from anxiety, happy, and what we say, uh, uh, they know exactly how to live life. There's no more anxiety. <laughs> The world is full of anxiety because people don't know how to live life. They're always making new ideas on how to live life. And then usually it's all based on just trying to manipulate the material energy to work. They get some token happiness and then it disappears because one cannot control the material energy, although one may try. Mm -hmm. So happiness and of course being the parent of Krishna, having the position of taking care of Krishna. We do that in deity worship. We're actually in the mood of Vatsalya Ras when we perform the mood deity worship. We wake the Lord up. The Lord is the same whether he's in his deity form or he's in any other form. He is Archivigara incarnation. That's him in the form he takes to facilitate his devotees' love by allowing them to care for him in a parental way, waking him up, bathing him, dressing him, feeding him, decorating his room nicely to make him feel happy. All of these things are very much in the mood of Vatsalya Ras. <laughs> and of course, the Madhurya Ras is there, which is the culmination of all sweetness uh, having a loving relationship, either as a paramour, of course, that, that level is a high level of bhakti, but it is available because each and every soul has an eternal relationship with Krishna in one of the rasas. So the process of bhakti helps to awaken that relationship. Here we're hearing about the transcendentalists who who absorb themselves in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. It doesn't get specific in terms of what they are hearing and chanting because each transcendentalist may have a particular attraction for Krishna in a certain mood according to their practice of devotional service, which is, comes under the guidance of their spiritual master. <clears throat> and then they, they enjoy that loving relationship so we can enter into that relationship simply by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Prabhupada said, I wrote these books for you, although you may be selling them, and that is important also. Still, they're for the devotees to learn about Krishna, to get attracted to Krishna, to actually develop a relationship with Krishna. And that can be done by absorbing oneself and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And this is what this second canto was about. And the second canto was the shortest, one of the shortest of all the cantos. The only canto that's shorter than, shorter, shorter than the second canto is the 12th canto. It's, it's, the second canto only has 10 chapters in it. <laughs> But each of the, I mean, I just finished the second canto. I studied the second canto for the last two, three months. It's power packed with philosophical teachings and knowledge. Srila Prabhupada put so much in his purports that it's beyond belief. You'll be amazed to see <clears throat> or to hear how he explains the verses in different ways. <clears throat> And the second canto also contains the uh, the essence of the Bhagavatam, what is called the nutshell verses. In the in the ninth chapter of the second canto, the whole summary of the Bhagavatam is given in four verses, verses thirty three through thirty six. These are the called the nutshell verses. Just like we find these nutshell verses are also in the Bhagavad Gita also and based on that particular scripture. So <clears throat> these nutshell verses are the spring of the, the entire philosophical teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a lifetime worth of study. We spend so much time going to school, trying to get a degree, to get some job <clears throat> that we don't like anyway. <clears throat> and then what happens? We waste time 
you know, just trying to keep up in the material world. But the real, the best use of our time is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And we need to give sufficient time for that and not be so much absorbed and simply take, trying to take care of our material responsibilities and expect that that's going to give us happiness. It may give us some security on a material level, but that's also temporary also. Here is the, this, pro, this verse, I'll read something about this verse. I just came across it last night. It's interesting. When I read the verse and then I was told that this is the verse I'm going to speak about, Today in class, I got really excited. I was thinking, wow, that's Krishna's special mercy. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it says here, because Raganuga Bhakti is inspired only by taste and not by the regu regulations of scriptures, it is called Anvihita, that spiritual activity is not motivated by Shastra, nor does it render it ineligible to be called pure devotion. Sukadeva Goswami confirms the spiritual validity of Anvita Bhaktis, and he quotes this verse. O King Pariksit, mainly the topmost transcendentalists who above regulative principles and restrictions take pleasure in describing the glories of the Lord. The development of spontaneous devotion may therefore appear unorthodox to the immature regulated devotee. However, Raga, Raganuga Bhakti follows its own orthodoxy, which is fixed in the guidelines of scripture, if not inspired by them. So here, Raganuga Bhakti is inspired only by taste. And here is where the taste is the being described by this verse. Okay, so we'll stop there. Open it up for questions. Maharaj, thank you for such a wonderful class. Really, really deep, I have to say, really deep points. And I really am looking forward to devotees. If you have any questions, please uh, do raise your hand. Uh, you can stop sharing the screen. And then we'll go to the gallery, yes. And if there are any questions, please do raise your hand. This is a very deep class. Um, Maharaj, I have a question while others are thinking. Um, it's, this is a really deep class, Maharaj. So I have to, I'm trying to think how to uh, formulate my question here. When, when you read that Raghunuga Bhakti is inspired only by taste, and then you mentioned that... Um, uh, Vaidhi Bhakti, you know, is when we are following the rules and regulations expertly. That's the key word that you use. So when we follow the rules and regulations expertly, which is the Vaidhi Bhakti merge, will that automatically give us the taste for spontaneous devotion? Yeah. But it has to be expert. That's because, because that keyword really caught my attention. I was saying, as, as as it's given, both by Guru and Shastra, and not according to how we interpret it. We may interpret it in different ways. So Sadhana Bhakti is divided in Vaidhi and Raganuga. Lord Chaitanya came to teach Raganuga Bhakti. He didn't come to teach Sadhana Bhakti. <laughs> That's for sure. Because he, he is Radharani in the mood of his pure devotee, in the mood of Vrindavan. And he is express, he's living that spontaneous devotion to the Lord through the process of uh, the mood of Vrindavan, which is the mood of Raghunuga Bhakti. You can't get into Vrindavan or you can't develop a taste for the Vrindavan unless you actually... Follow the process very carefully. And then even on Nishta, the third, the fourth, or no, fifth stage, one can start to move into developing that taste. 
You have to come to the stage of nishta. There's nothing below that. In Arta Nivriti, you're still struggling with the the obstacles that are blocking your progress in devotional service. But by the guidance of the spiritual master and adherence to the process given by the spiritual master and the Lord, one can move beyond Raganuga, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, um, an art of Nivriti into Nishta. So Nishta may also give a taste. And when that taste becomes more and more, it moves into uh, Ruchi or a sweet taste for Krishna consciousness. In that stage, Raganuga Bhakti it will start to develop even more. But here is the process. You have to focus on hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. It doesn't come simply by uh, following regulative principles. Regulative principles will get you to a certain level of stability in, the, in your process, but hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is the, is the actual formula for attraction to the Lord. We have to hear about Krishna. <laughs> and we have to absorb myself in that hearing. Prabhupada said, the devotee wants to know everything about Krishna. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Krishna is, I mean, it's not possible to know everything. But he's giving that as a as a statement that we should be in that mood of learning as much as we can, hearing as much as we can about Krishna. And in Mars, the, the, the hearing and chanting of the Lord, which is the foundation of giving us that taste, that would be by the bhakti, which is following the rules and regulations so expertly to give us that next level. Yeah, you 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 have to go through the process. Vaidhi is the is the first stage, but if you stay on Vaidhi, and then you you actually don't understand the purpose of the whole process of bhakti. It's to get you through that stage. Just like you might say, you know, if you want to graduate, you got to go through all the grades. You can't stay at the lower grades and, and consider yourself. A graduate, you know. <laughs> Thank you, March. Thank you so much. I'm going to go to Prikshit with his question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my whole obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Thank you again for a wonderful class. Um, I don't have a question, but I'm just asking if you could repeat the nutshell texts, verses that you gave. You says 33, to, but the whole reference. If you, if you don't mind. It's interesting because I was just reading Chaitanya Charitamrita in the first chapter called Spiritual Masters. And in that first chapter from verses 50, 53, 54, 55, and 56, the nutshell verses again are listed by Krishna Das Kaviraj. And then Srila Prabhupada expands again on those verses and giving even more and more information based on those verses that are mentioned in the in the second canto, which is 33, 34, 35, and 36 of chapter 9. Okay. Canto 2, chapter 9, with text 33 to 36. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. And chapter 1, Chaitanya 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 Slightly different translation in the English, but the same meaning is there. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Sri Devi, it's you next. Thank you, Anusya. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. 
Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for pointing out the importance of hearing and chanting. Uh, we sing this verse every day in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Nashta Prayeshu Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Shloke. And just today morning, I was hearing Prabhupada speaking that uh, we have to hear Nityam every day. It is not, uh, you know, this Bhagavat Saptaha thing, seven days we hear, complete the whole Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> So it's not like that. Maharaj Parikshit was a special case. And uh, it's not like that for us. So my question is this. If we don't make it a point to hear, to attend the class every day, we are not in a position to really uh, get the philosophy. That's my humble understanding because... That's where you get doubts cleared, you can ask questions, you can get clarity, you can get realizations. Uh, so many things happen in that class. So my question is this, many of the speakers, they only show up on the day they have to give class, but they don't attend the class every day. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering that yeah. is that is that something we can, uh, you know, skip like that? Because that's going to be very detrimental for us, isn't it? You don't know what they're doing. Why are they skipping? <laughs> they could be preparing for their next class. They could be chanting extra rounds. They could be studying scriptures. <laughs> it's nice if they show up because it's an example for, for the rest of us. But... It's not that they're negligent in spiritual life if they're <clears throat> if they don't show up. Got it. Okay. Thank sleeping, you, Guru Maharaj. If they're sleeping, then 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 you, yeah. But if <laughs> but if they're you know like I know I can name I won't name a person, but they write books. And they'll spend seven, eight hours straight writing books. So they won't go to the morning program because they're writing books on Krishna consciousness. They're chanting their rounds and they're absorbed in writing books about Krishna. So you can't say that they're negligent. <laughs> Not at all. What are you doing at that time? <laughs> So, but there are some concern that as an example for others, they should they could be there. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It may not always be possible. <laughs> Thank you for asking, for clarifying that question, actually, Sri David. Thank you so much. Any questions from devotees, please do raise your hand, uh, put in the chat. This is a very deep class for us to really get deep into. There's a question that just came from Dear Krishna. I'm going to read that, Maharaj. Um, Hare Krishna, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to proper, all glories to you. Thank you for the beautiful class. How important is good Sangha to develop taste for Raghunuga Bhakti and start practicing? Well, it's obviously important <clears throat> because how will you make advancement through the, the different stages without association of devotees? <laughs> association of devotees helps more helps one to learn the process of devotional service, gives one an opportunity for service, gives one an opportunity to uh, reflect on one's own situation and... Uh, learn how to avoid certain anarthas. Association of devotees is an ocean of transcendental knowledge. But we should associate with devotees in the mood of serving the devotees and hearing from devotees. That's how we associate. We hear from <clears throat> advanced devotees. We associate and serve and assist those on the equal level and those who are on the lesser level we take the opportunity to uh, give them some some advice, some guidance, some knowledge that will move them closer on the path of bhakti. And that's mentioned 
these three types of, of association is mentioned in in, in Srimad Bhagavatam in the, in the pastime of Dhruva Maharaj. An association of, you have to associate. If you don't associate with devotees, you'll, so, you'll look for association in some way or another. And a lot of times you find yourself associating in, in the wrong way. I can say, I know, I won't say, I won't mention any names, but I can say, I saw one devotee who was very much engaged in Krishna consciousness. But then he's because of his <clears throat> outside occupation, he stopped associating with devotees and he started association with non-devotees. And pretty soon he left Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> That's how you fall down when you start associating with non-devotees. That's the pro That's the beginning of the fall down. Mm -hmm. And the beginning of... Moving forward is to give up the association of non-devotees and take to the association of devotees. In any field of learning or any occupational uh, activity, we always associate with people who are of the same nature because we learn from them. We also teach them by our own example. Association cannot be minimize. That's why Prabhupada said it's the most important thing because the whole process of bhakti centers around association. Thank even, you. Even Sorry. For, even for advanced devotees, they look forward to association because it gives them transcendental happiness. But even but if an advanced devotee, I mean really advanced devotee, doesn't associate, that doesn't mean they're going to fall down because they'll they're associating with Krishna in different ways through different pra practices of devotional service. But still, they also look forward to association of devotees. Thank you, March. I thank you for actually. Uh... Like, you know, reminding us about the three different ways of sadhu sangha because sometimes I come across situations where uh, devotees tend to cross the lines, you know, where when we are in association with devotees, senior devotees, especially like sannyasis and gurus, um, we give them advice. <laughs> we get to personal instead of taking their association and their blessings. That's a very good point, Mars. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Uh, Dr. Brett, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, Maharaj. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Um, Maharaj, on the top, thank you so much for the class, Maharaj. As, as Mother Anasi, you said very, very, lot, lots of food for thought. But Maharaj, on the topic of um, Vaidhi Bhakti, you know, as we're developing in our Krishna consciousness and we're following these regulated principles under the guidance of a spiritual master, um, I've come across, you know, with, a, you know, being in the temple a lot, um, with newer devotees that move into the temple that are also, you know, on this path and de developing in their Krishna consciousness. Um, as you said before, Maharaj, you know, there's some of these devotees who, who can be wallflowers or a little hesitant for association um but uh, some of them i've noticed they can be so um encapsulated within their sadhana so you know very very staunch in their practice you know they're chanting their rounds they're they're attending programs but then when it comes to devotee association or you know sitting down as as the purport says and and reflecting on our experiences and, and speaking on Krishna Katha in the temple. Some devotees have, you know, a hard time with that. And I, I myself have even experienced moments where, you know, these newer devotees who are so, you know, enwrapped in their sadhana have, have told me, you know, you know, Prabhu, let's, let's, let's just be quiet and, and, and meditate and, and not really speak when I'm, you know, sharing Krishna Katha or trying to associate or get them, you know, involved with other devotional services so much. How, how can I absorb these encounters where, you know, these devotees who who are just, you know, getting into Krishna consciousness, but so, 
you know, so, so tunnel vision within their sadhana that when I try to speak of Krishna, you know, it might rile up something and they say, you know, hush, hush. And then I feel, you know, okay, well. Well, I, there's, there's, two ways, I forward, Mara? there's two ways to look at it. <laughs> we can also associate with devotees in the process of doing service together. <laughs> That is that is actually the prime one of the prime ways to associate that we are working together on a particular service and we're carrying it out the service and we're getting that association with each other through that service. Um, many persons look in that way for service. And then there's others who don't know how to associate. And therefore, they just want to absorb themselves, and they have they're they're called neophyte devotees. They're still on the the uh, they're called prakriti bhaktas. They they they're, they're the only concern of this is their own spiritual practice. So that's mentioned in the nectar of instructions that there are three levels. Uh, what is it called? Uttama Arikari, Madhyama Arikari, and Kanista. Kanista means uh, it's just me, Krishna, and the spiritual master. The other devotees are around most of the time. I don't have time for them, or I don't really look for any opportunity to associate. I might associate through service a little bit, but that's all. They're neophyte devotees. Second class devotee is makes friends with other devotees, worships the Lord in love, uh, preaches to the, the to the innocent, and avoids the atheist. So that's the second class platform. And that is the platform of ISKCON. ISKCON is meant to uh, evolve and involve and move forward from on the second class platform. So you can you have to find those devotees who are more inclined to uh, because in your situation, you can learn from them. You can learn Krishna consciousness. It's not that we associate so we can just talk about what's happening in in our, you know. Sometimes we get, we talk personally about things like that, but it doesn't become the main topic. Main topic is our association that centers around service, around Krishna, around around um, what, how we can improve in our devotional life. So there's different devotees and you have to find those devotees that you can associate with. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. And then what, what do we say of, you know, and I hate, I hate to look at it that way, I hate to see any devotee, you know, as a neophyte, but, you know, when you have these interactions, when you're living in the temple over and over again with the same devotee, how do we, you know, how do we help these devotees? You know, there's one I think of in, in specific Maharaj that, you know, my heart is soft for because, you know, this devotee has the, their sadhana practice. They come, they come and attend Mangalarti, they come to programs, but then, you know, they're off doing their research or their work and, or they're off doing this. And there isn't much, like you said, there isn't much um, association where it's it's growing or, or talking of Krishna Katha or, or or doing any service really, Maharaj. It's just living in the temple, going to going to the program and going off. There's nothing wrong with what they're doing, but <clears throat> if they're unfriendly, then then that's that's another thing. If they don't if they don't want to look at you or bother with you or if you're in their way. Then that's one thing, but if they're they're absorbed in their sadhana and then they're going out doing their service, that's fine. Nothing wrong in that. That means, in one sense, they're fixed. But if they're unfriendly or they consider you a nuisance, then then uh, don't be a nuisance, though. <laughs> Thank you.
That's how Krishna consciousness spread. Devotees were absorbed in their service and their sadhana. But when they were in their service, they were associating with each other and working together as a team to do service. And when you do when you when you're with devotees, you should be friendly. That's all. That's one of the ways how devotees at least respectful and polite. Maybe when it comes to the opposite sex, would do maybe it's a little bit more respectful and polite. But with the, the same gender, we're usually friendly. And friendliness is not talking nonsense. That's not friendliness. <laughs> So I wouldn't judge anybody <laughs> or try to consider yourself, you know, better than them and try to help them. Just try to do your service and when the opportunity comes, take advantage of other devotees and, you know, you're a new devotee. You can't say you're in a position of, uh, you know, giving guidance to others. You you should be taking guidance from all of the, some of the, some of these devotees who are fixed, so you can come up to them and ask questions, and that way you create a, a relationship. That I've been reading this and I don't understand this. Can you explain it to me, or what do you think about this, or you know? Don't present yourself as more advanced because. No one will really appreciate that. <laughs> Hare Krishna, thank, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Definitely. And and try to you know engage uh, some 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 more youth and, and devotees who are just coming to temple for the first time in these conversations. I think. And if as well. you see a devotee doing a service, and you can offer a little assistance in that service, then do it. You know. Yes, Maharaj, absolutely. Maybe somebody is working and you can hand them a tool or you lift, you help them lift a box or, you know, Anything. ways we can show that we are interested in each other, not simply we're just a bunch of numbers in a, in a, in a, in a temple and everybody is in their own island. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Maharaj. Very well. Thank you, Maharaj. Very yeah, nice question, Brent. Some of, these, some of these devotees don't want to waste time with just ordinary talk, so they don't associate because of that. They would rather be engaged in devotional service, doing things, instead of just, just sitting around and talking. And But follow the process. Go to the Bhagavatam class and get into the discussions. In the class, the Bhagavad Gita class is like that. And then read on your own. And when you read, meet it when you meet a devotee, ask them about certain things or tell them about what you're reading. That sparks a relationship based on Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Maharaj. Really, really lots of points, lots of food for thought. Very, very nice. Thank you, Marge. Any questions from devotees, please do raise your hand or you can put it in the chat and I'll be happy to read it. Marge, that's a question that I have and you mentioned in your class uh, that, and I took note of it because it was very powerful for me where you said that devotional activities should lead us, should lead us to give us a taste to chanting, hearing and reading of the Lord. And I'm thinking, Mars, that devotional activities means like devotional service. Yeah, there's there's hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord that goes on. We should do that every day, even at the beginning of our Krishna consciousness. And then there's practical activity. Practical activity gets you free from selfishness. Hearing and chanting attracts you to Krishna in a more personal way. When you do something for when you serve, you're giving up your own, you're giving your time to do something for the Lord or for the Lord's devotee, and you're getting free from this selfish attitude. Mm -hmm. 
Maharaj, can you repeat the part with the chanting? It's so powerful that I just got, I could only type with one <laughs> sentence. You, I got the part where you said that devotional service gets one freed from the selfishness, the selfish attitude. Chanting and hearing, you said. Attracts you to Krishna. On attracts, occasion. that's the word. Yeah. Krishna's his name is Krishna, all attractive. His name's all attractive. His qualities are all attractive. His forms are all attractive. Pastimes are extremely attractive. But if we have no taste, that means we're still, you know, too much covered by the material energy. The taste will come by the activity. The taste, and, and that is the devotional service part because it gets us free from the selfish attitude, right, yeah. Mark? Yeah, and it also gives you a taste. You feel happy when you serve. If you're actually serving, you you should feel happy. Because it's the nature of the soul to serve. It's the nature of the mind to try to get people to serve you. <laughs> The rascal mind. Really powerful points, Marge. So, devotional service and the chanting and hearing and reading, they go hand in hand. Oh, yeah. Sadhana and seva. Sadhana and seva leads to sadhya. Sadhya is the gold. <laughs> Sadhana, seva, sadhya. <laughs> Really powerful points. I'm having, I have to go fast with my finger typing here. <laughs> it's too slow. It's so, I have to go back and play this class again, Marge. Really, really powerful points. Amazing. I, I hope the rest of us are really getting a lot of food for thought that we can think about and meditate on today. A very powerful verse that we, we, it's not a small verse. It's on the platform of Raganuga Bhakti, that verse. It's not, Bhakti. And March, what are the symptoms of one who mimics Raghunuga Bhaktas? <laughs> you, you can't imitate it. It's either there or it's not. <laughs> That's called Sahajiism. Those who try to imitate it will look foolish. That's Sahajiism or taking things cheaply. It's a natural awakening of attraction and not something that artificially. The process will, hearing and chanting and serving will help you to awaken it, but only when it's awakened does it actually manifest and not before that. Very deep class, Maharaj, <laughs> in a very deep verse, as you said, Maharaj, definitely a very, very deep verse for well, us. Actually, you know, the soul is is spontaneously attracted to Krishna. As soon as we get rid of all of these material covers, our attraction for Krishna is like a, is compared to a, a, a magnet and an, and a uh, iron filings. The island firings just immediately be pulled by the magnet. But if there's rust on the iron, iron, although the magnet is there, detraction doesn't occur. Get rid of the rust. Clean up the dust, which is mostly about lust. That's the must. And if you do that, you'll become very just. <laughs> Maharaj, that was a poem right there. I hope someone made note of it. It's powerful. And believe me, you can trust. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go back and snip this part and make it, make, make it into a quote. <laughs>
Yeah, the lu the rust is actually lust. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Which is the covering over the soul. Mm -hmm. Wow. Really amazing. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Any other questions from devotees? Yes, this has been a pretty deep verse, as Maharaj said, and a very deep class for me, very, very deep. If there are no questions, Marge, would you like to end with a round of chanting? Uh, have I said no at, at any time? Never have, Maharaj. Never, never have. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to start today. Either. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to end with the holy name because the holy name is actually... The beginning, middle, and end of everything. Yeah, hey, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Hare, Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari 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 Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari 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 Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Ram Hari Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Rama. Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, 
Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna. Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Krishna. Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari Hari Jai Sri Krishna, Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sivasadi Gaur Bhaktarindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you so much, Maj, for such a wonderful class, a very, very deep thought class. And I really encourage devotees, if you can, go back and hear it, because it's really, really deep. And we thank all the devotees for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Guru Maharaj wants to. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Maharaj wants to say something. Hold on one second. Don't leave yet. Just to mention that bhakti is a science and it's given at nine stages, starting with faith all the way up to prema, love. And the Shikshastakam prayers are really the means by which you can understand each of the nine stages and some of the characteristics of each of those stages. So in Italy, from the 3rd to the 6th of uh, May, we'll be doing a uh, seminar program. Uta Bhavana and myself, I'll be speaking on verse 1 and 2 and verse 7 and 8. 
and he'll be speaking on verse 3, 4, 5, and 6. So in that, we'll cover those nine stages along with the glories of the holy name. So anybody who wants to attend, it's available. Um, we have our team that you can contact. Ecta is Ecta is one of them, and uh, um, I'm thinking who else? Wow. Sham, Sham Lau. You can contact me as well, Guru Maharaj. Good Sukabaha in London, and uh, you can register and come and. Uh, Knowing the nine stages and the characteristics of the nine stages helps you to see what level you are and how you're practicing and how to go to the next level, which is important. Bhakti is a real exact, it's an exact science, but it is done in a way of what we say, what's the way to explain it? It's based on service and attitude. The attitude and the service are the two, combine those together and you got the ingredients that make up bhakti. What is the attitude or what is the input you put in, in terms of your consciousness and the activities you perform? So when we know how to each of the stages and how to move from one stage to another and things become easy easy to see what we need to work on and Bhutta Bhavana will be covering pretty much the heart of the, the whole thing 3, 4, 5 and 6 especially third, verses 3 and 3 and 5 are I mean, three, four, and five are very fundamental verses for revealing one's uh, the knowledge you need for progressing. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu put the entire process of pure devotional service in those nine verse, eight verses. And so, anyone who wants to take advantage can come. And we still have. The registration is still open for another, I think, April 10th, they want to close the registration. But if you mm -hmm. can make it by April 10th, fine. If you can't, then you can give it an extension. But please register. It's not. It's quite inexpensive, and it's a good time. It's a good association, and the prashadam will be great. <laughs> Krishna consciousness got everything. <laughs> Can't beat it. <laughs> package deal, Maharaj. Package deal. Okay. Maharaj, well, okay, Prichit has has a question, I think. Go ahead, Prichit, my husband. Thank you so much. We step on holy basis. All goes to the power of God. There is a question in the chat that was put in a little later, and so it wasn't read, if you don't mind. This um, Kalakanti Radhika is asking one question about a friend. He says his friend is losing taste for Krishna consciousness and converting more into Christianity. What can I do to help her? Please? She's first initiated. That was the question. Well, She's converting to Christianity. If she wasn't initiated, I wouldn't have any problems. But since, since she's committed herself to a spiritual master, and then uh, to give up your spiritual master is a, is a maha offense. Mm -hmm. You can ask, you can tell you, ask your spiritual master, I'd like to learn more of bhakti through Christian teachings. And I'm sure he will object to that. But they mm -hmm. already initiated, she's made a vow to chant 16 rounds and to follow the four regulative principles. I have a, I don't want to mention a name, but there was one disciple also that did that with me. But he he just left and went to Christianity. And so actually, he was an offender. And uh, so what could I say? 
but but once you make your commitment to a spiritual teacher and you vow to follow that commitment then that's not a small thing you can't just whimsically give it up if she wasn't initiated it would be different but you promise to follow the spiritual master at the time of initiation and that's that's not a promise that's a vow a vow is a is a promise that cannot be broken if it's broken there's reactions for mm. it's like when you get married and you a vow to you fulfill the role either as a husband or a wife and then you fail to do that and you give up the relationship then obviously you are you know deviant because you you made a vow to stay together So when we make an initiation vow, it's before the spiritual master, it's before the fire, which represents Vishnu, it's for the assembly of devotees who are there. It's a it's not a small thing. Mm -hmm. So if she wants to if she has some interest in Krishna and spiritual and Christianity, she can talk to our spiritual master. And I'm sure he will allow her to pursue her interests as long as she follows her pro the process of Krishna consciousness. But if she gives up the practice and goes to Christian practice, then she she commits an offense. And it'll hurt her it'll hurt her spiritual life too, also. You know, reminds me of one point that Bhattitera Maharaj made. Um, every time, I never understood this, but your answer has actually brought this more to light. Um, whenever the day of initiation comes and the devotees are getting initiated uh, in front of him, he still says, it's not too late to leave if you want to leave. He, uh, he actually bring, brings it up and I'll say, Wow, every time I hear that, I think, but they are ready to get initiated. So why is Maharaj making this point? In other words, you have to be sure that you're getting in because when you're committed, then you really should understand this. You're in for the rest of your life. And this is the point that you made here. So thank you. It's kind of crystallized that in my mind. Yeah. Why Bhakti Maharaj made the statement. I've seen him do that. And that's, that's the, all right. You're making a decision. It's no turning back now. <laughs> You can turn now. You still have a, a few minutes to turn back, <clears throat> but after that, after that's made, no turning back. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, a question from Manisha. She just popped in. Okay, go ahead, Manisha. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All the best to you and Shri Prabhupada. So sorry, Maharaj, for so late asking. Maharaj, actually, uh, what should I do to maintain my sadhana in difficult times? Because my father has a lot well. And when he is administered to the hospital, my sadhana gets disturbed because uh, I have to stay with him all the time. Yeah, just find, find some time during the day. Just like you know, one lady, she, was, she had a young baby. She said, I couldn't, I don't have any time to chant. I have to be with the baby all the time. Well, I said, the baby does sleep once in a while. So you can, so I told her you chant four, 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 and four. You chant four rounds, four times a day. And she took it seriously. She did it. And she came back to me and said, oh, no, nah, this is working, working really nicely. Thank you. And so you have to, You if it's obviously there are certain emergencies or uh, responsibilities that cannot be neglected, but chanting your rounds is also a responsibility. So Prabhupada said, if you can't chant your rounds, then you know, sleep less. <laughs> That's what Prabhupada would say, or or skip a meal. <laughs> we won't do that. 
He'll skip our rounds, but he won't sleep less or skip a meal. That's how important it is. Thank you so much, Mark. If you don't take Krishna consciousness seriously, you won't be able to understand what it's about. There's no option about giving up rounds. It's, <clears throat> you can speak to your spiritual master or someone in the role of a spiritual master and get some practical advice on how to organize your day. <laughs> These things are available. <laughs> Hope that helped, Manisha. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Marsh, one last question, Marsh. The class that you and Bhutabhavna are giving in Italy, is it gonna be on Zoom? Will it be recorded? Um I don't know. Probably but I can ask Sukabaha Mataji. Probably she I don't think so, because we don't want people to take that as an option. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Ma okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck. I need to get notes. <laughs> no, you just need to come, Anasia. Book your Mataji, ticket. How do I come, Mataji? I have Seva Mataji. <laughs> I just work. It's only one. I'll find a way. I'll find a way. <laughs> yes, now coming. Anasia, yes, now coming. Hare <laughs> Krishna. I have to beg for Marge's mercy, really beg for Marge's mercy, how to get the where, note. Where, where there's a will, there's a way. Oh God, now you got me stuck. Hare Krishna, <laughs> Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, okay. <laughs> well, if you come, it's nice. If you don't come, then we understand why. <laughs> Thank you, Marge, for being so kind and merciful to me. Shridevi, Marge is very kind to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice You're to have your lucky. association, You're but very lucky. Miss you. <laughs> if I can find a way, you know, to cover everything here, I could, but I will work on it. Watch out, those Italian kirtans are really high energy. <laughs> I heard about that, Maharaj. They are like rocking kirtans. Mm. Amazing. Thank you, Maharaj. I really would like to hear that incorporating of the shishastakam with the nine processes that's like wow powerful if you want i can send i can send you this we have a schedule it's already oh uh, yes Marge, please i would yes please marriage mm -hmm. yes thank you anybody thank you. wants the schedule they can contact sukava and she'll send okay. it okay great thank you so much Thank you, Marsh, for staying on a little longer and answering more questions. Thank you so much to all the that, uh, patient. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare 